When you're working in a mechanical environment, you quite often utilize regular combinations of nuts, bolts, washers, spacers, holes, slotted holes, and so on. That's where on the content tab here on the ribbon, in the fasteners panel, you have the screw templates option. If I click on screw templates, it brings up the screw assembly template. So as you can see, you've got a combination now of there's your bolt, washer, hole, hole, washer, nut. Now you can bring up any of these. These are just sample ones and you can create your own. But if I go to sample two, you'll see it looks different. So it's a nut, a washer, a hole, and then a regular thread. If I go to sample three, again, it's a regular thread countersunk screw. There's the countersunk hole. There's the hole for the screw, the washer, and again, the nut at the end. So all of these are utilizing standard parts from the content libraries, but in a known combination. So I'll go back to say sample one now. If I load up that particular template here by using this icon here, you'll see that I can update what I'm going to use. So I might not want, let's say, a front view. I might want a top or a bottom view. I might not want an M10. I might want to use an M12. But it knows that. So what I'm doing here is saying I want all of this set up in the drawing so that it's using M12 bolts, M12 nuts, M12 washers, and so on. I'll just go back there now, and what I'll do, I'll go for sample five. That's a nice, easy one. It's only using a bolt, a washer, and a hole. So if I load up that template there, you'll see, again, it's using the same information, all from the standard parts from the content libraries. I'm going to go for an M10 on that particular one, and I want a front view, like that. So I want a front view of an M10. If I click on Next now, it prompts me where am I going to put that in my drawing. So let's bring in our little equal L bracket here. I'm going to pop it there on the midpoint. That's the start point of the hole. The end point of the hole is going to be perpendicular below. Then it tells me what information I've actually just set up. There's the X, Y, and Z coordinates of the insertion point, the angle it's inserted at, the plate, the gap, and so on. So all the information is there. I can change it if I want to. If I click on Finish now, it'll think about it for a few seconds and then place that into the drawing for me. So I'll just drag that there and click so that it's fitted. If I click there now, though, you can see that there's no dynamic block selection because it's all different parts put together. It's not like one of these where I click here and I can specify a length. Yeah? So it's slightly different in that regard. But look... If I zoom in there, I've got my nut, my washer, and my hole. It's all placed. Can you see the hole there? You can just see that if I zoom in. There's the hole through the plate. So it's done it all for me. That's really clever stuff, and it's going to make me so much quicker when I'm working in my drawings. So these screw templates here, if I click here on this little icon here, if I go in there, that gives me the AM content tab in my options dialog box. That allows me to customize things like content libraries management, content behavior, and object properties overrides. So it's just basically how these objects are displayed and how they come into the drawing. But I can edit it if I need to. So you can see there that the screw templates allow you to have standard configurations of all the different fastening parts from the fasteners panel on the content tab makes your life a lot easier because it's all done in the one operation.